Let's get on cooking. Perfecto. These are the smells that I remember walking around the streets of Rome. You don't want to insult the Italians. Mother? Done. Welcome back everyone to my channel. So I hope you enjoyed the vlogs that I did during my travels in Italy. It was an absolutely fantastic trip uh, and I've made huge leaps forward with my recovery. For the first time in years, I have managed to sustain a period of not counting anything. And I'm seeing the benefits, you know, I'm a lot more happy, I'm a lot more fluid with what I'm doing during the day. I mean, an example of this is today, I went out with my mum and we had lunch and we had a snack. I just, I did whatever I wanted. I went with the flow and that's something I haven't been able to do for years. Now, it's the night before I leave for the US and I wanted to leave with a bit of a bang. So, what I wanted to do is to try and recreate one of the dishes that I had during my travels in Italy, and that is the carbonara. I've been fortunate enough to try three different places, and they were absolutely incredible. Uh, the first of which was Luciano, which unfortunately I didn't try this time around, but this guy is called the carbonara king for a reason. The second one is Rosioli. very good but not as good as Luciano it wasn't as rich and the guanciale wasn't as perfectly cooked and then the final one Osteria de Fortunata I'm so glad that I went there on the final day of my trip in Italy it was a very different way of having carbonara in the moment, I said it was better than Luciano, but actually looking back, Luciano's one is a lot richer and the guanciale was even more crisp. The plan for this evening is to try and recreate Luciano's carbonara. Over the past week, I've visited London to obtain a few of the vital ingredients. So let's go back a week uh, to that footage. Now I hope I'm not offending any Italians with the ingredients that I bought, but I tried to keep it as authentic as possible. It was actually a very expensive trip. I think it cost you know over 20 pounds for everything. So that for two plates of carbonara that I'm going to cook with mum and I is a lot of money. But without further ado, I'm getting quite hungry. So let's get on cooking. Now these are all the ingredients that you're going to need to make Luciano's carbonara. The first thing is pecorino cheese, which I got in Italy. Now the second cheese, I've made a mistake. I don't know how I did it, I misread Grana Padana cheese and I accidentally bought Parmigiana. I did read online and it does seem to be a suitable alternative, but I apologise for that. The third thing is some high quality pasta, and as you can see, no orange pasta, so Vincenzo, I hope you're happy. Then we've got some guanciale. In Luciano's recipe, he does call for thickly cut pieces and these are a bit thinner. I had to make do with what I had, to be honest. And then the final thing are some high quality eggs. And these are Bertha Browns. And the yolks on these are just so, so orange. And the first thing I'm gonna do is weigh out the cheeses. So I'm gonna need 10 grams of Pecorino Romano and 15 grams of the Parmesan. So I'm gonna grate these in and then come back to you in a second. Right, when you get really close to the end, it's very easy to cut yourself. There you go, so there's 10 grams. Now to do the Parmesan. Now this stuff has been matured for 48 months. I mean, it smells lovely. <laughs> Very pungent though. 
So 15 grams of this. And there we go. Total of 25 grams of cheese, done. Now to add two grams of freshly ground black pepper. I think we can stop there. It's not gonna register two grams, but I think that's about right. Now step two, I need to get two egg yolks from these lovely, lovely eggs. Let's see how good I am at separating eggs. Oh, got it. One yolk. Number two. And that's egg yolk number two, perfecto. Now the final bit of preparation is to whisk this together until it's basically a finely blended paste. And you can see how orange these yolks are. It's very, very rich. And that's all that you need to make a wonderful carbonara sauce. The last thing that I'm going to add a bit later is the pasta water. Now the cooking can start. So the first thing that I need to do is cook this guanciale on a low heat. It calls for no oil, no butter. It's gonna actually produce that on its own. And then you'll mix that with the eggs, with the cheese, and it will make the sauce a bit later. So let's get to the pan. So I've got the induction hob on a low heat, a three out of nine. Let's see how we go from there. In. Okay, so I'm gonna dial this up to a four because I'm not hearing anything. What we essentially want is for all of the fat to render out. So I'm just reading ahead and the next step actually calls to cook the spaghetti. So let's get some water boiling. And as with any spaghetti cooking, you want the water to be as salty as the ocean. I have to do it for now. Dial this up to a five because I'm seeing very minimal cooking right now. Oh, it's starting to smell very lovely indeed. There we have it. This stuff is finely cooking and you can see that it's rendering a lot. Ooh. I'm, doing, I'm doing a happy dance. These are the smells that I remember walking around the streets of Rome. It's just, we're gonna keep on cooking this down until I remember how crispy it was in Rome. It was, it was like a shell around the outside and then you've got this really soft and unctuous interior. So I wanna get to that point. I'm already about 10 minutes in, but once this is done and the pasta's cooked, everything comes together really, really quickly. So I've got 140 grams of this spaghetti and I mean, just look at the quality. You can see this coarseness and this is what will cling on to all the sauce. And no breaking the spaghetti in half. You don't want to insult the Italians. So what you're going to want to do is then try and get this pasta into the water as soon as possible so it all cooks very evenly. Maybe another six minutes to get to that al dente stage because it will finish the cooking in the sauce. So this guanciale is at a stage now where I'm happy with. I'm gonna put it into a bowl and then wait for this fat to cool down a bit before I add it to the egg mix. Perfect. So the guanciale is all cooked and if you can hear it, very crispy. And then you've also got this rendered fat from the guanciale. Now, before I enter recovery, this stuff, it was a big no-no for me. I mean, I'd be too scared to go near this stuff. Fat is flavour, this stuff is liquid gold. Luciano uses it, I'm gonna use it. And I want this dish to be a great send off before I go to the US. This pasta is cooked, so let's get it drained and then reserve one cup of the pasta water. That's very important. The starch that's leached off of the pasta will be used to thicken the sauce. There we go, and we can drain the rest off. So we're getting to the very end now. And what I've done is I've added the egg mixture into this pan. And then what I'm going to do is add the rendered guanciale fat and then mix pretty vigorously, not with this spoon, obviously, and then proceed to add the pasta. So this should all in theory come together very quickly now. So let's go. On a very low heat, in goes some of the guanciale fat. And then we need to mix. So you can see here that we're mixing, we're mixing fast. We don't want to scramble the eggs. Now with this heated up, I'm gonna add the pasta. So, in it goes. And now we mix vigorously, making sure that all of the pasta is coated. Now this is where you're gonna to wanna to add some pasta water. So I've got some reserved to add. And it little by little, ensuring that we've got a nice and thick, creamy sauce. Add a little bit more. I think that sauce is getting there, you know. 
The sauce is sticking up quite nicely, I think we're there. So the final step now is to add the guanciale with the heat off. In it goes, there we go. And time for the final vigorous whisk. We are there, we're there. Mother, done. Time to dish up the fruits of our labor. So get a nice ladle full. I know some people use those fancy forks, but I can't be bothered. The final scrapings go in here. So about an hour later, and we've got two lovely bowls of carbonara. So here's some of the guanciale. Okay, so we're gonna eat the rest of this. Thanks everyone for watching. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. I'm doing I'm doing a happy dance. Mm.